Welcome back to the final section of cardiopulmonary bypass, that is the emergency scenarios. Again, bear in mind, this is a topic which is very vast, very vivid. We can spend hours and hours discussing this. This is just a brief summary. So I prepared this mind map just to put you in the picture. What kind of scenarios and what's your aim? You will do a lot of steps during this emergency scenario. However, you must bear in mind what's the end target. What are you trying to do? You will do various steps, but to achieve a certain goal, a certain aim. Um, I prepared them in a visually easy manner to remember. So the emergency scenarios will include air lock, air embolism. It will also include atrogenic dissection, for instance, IVC tear, which are the two main, <laughs> two biggest disasters in my view. I think so. Protamine reaction and pump failure. Okay. Now, the main aim during airlock is to flush the air out with fluid. The main aim during air embolism is to establish retrograde cerebral perfusion again to flush the air out of the cerebral circulation. Iatrogenic dissection, you are trying to achieve circarest to be repairing it. In IVC tear, uh, you may be lucky enough, it's a small tear, you can fix it. Uh, quickly without having to go on circa risk but if it's a big tear especially traveling down to the abdomen you'll have to go on circa risk to repair it also protamine reaction you need to understand what type of reaction is happening and neutralize its effect we'll explain that in details now pump failure you need to basically replace the pump there are general rules you must be understanding what stage are you how the emergency scenario occur and always first step announce to everyone in the theater that we have an emergency scenario so everyone is on board second is you need to understand what stage are you in remember cardiopulmonary bypass is basically bypassing the heart function and the lung function now you're having a problem you're having a scenario which is preventing you from doing this bypass is the heart functional can you restart it is the lung functional can you restart it do you have a structural defect which prevents you from doing that how long will it take you are you closer to restoring or resummoning the function of the heart and the lung or are you closer to fixing the problem and re-establishing the pump back again this is what you need to bear in mind you might do some steps in the in the interim or in the meanwhile for instance you might massage the heart to uh, restore its function you might restart the lung restart the ventilation to restore its function it, it's very variable what stage are you in Okay, you need to bear that in mind. Finally, what drugs can help? Can you use corticosteroids, adrenaline, oxygen? What do you need? Cold packs? What do you need? Okay. Now, first scenario, air lock. As we explained, that means air on the venous side. Um, that's um, uh, a complication which might occur if you inadvertently, inadvertently open the right side of the heart. Um, uh, without snaring the cannula or uh, um, the cannula slips out so basically the first step in most of these scenarios is off pump switch off the pump um, uh, this will automatically happen with the with the um, nowadays pumps because there is level detector obviously air will stop the venous return hence the level will go down level detector will switch off the pump automatically you need to chase this air uh, down lifting the pump so air will go up and then sequentially lifting the next point will again uh, um, push the air down the tube also raising the table will increase the venous pressure gradient hence allowing the fluid to go worst case scenario if you have a very big air uh, lock you need to disconnect the venous cannula fill it with fluid on table and reconnecting it again uh, then air embolism air in the arterial side you um, um, may need to actually establish a retrograde cerebral perfusion uh, we're talking about really big air embolism we're not talking about single bubbles we're talking about large amount of air going into the uh, arterial line you need to re-establish uh, retro you need to establish retrograde cerebral perfusion to flush this air out um, uh, of course uh, as we said the first step is off bypass you need to switch off the pump you cannot continue giving air through the arterial line connect the arterial line to the venous cannula it will help you to also perfuse and uh, um, uh, reduce the effect of hypovolemia commence retrograde cerebral perfusion you need to put cold packs on the head trendelenburg dexamethasone uh, and uh, uh, checking for the bubbles coming out of the aortic root vent. Once you achieve that, it's also documented in some studies that anti-grade cerebral perfusion afterwards is also helpful. It will also reduce the effects of the air embolism. And then 
um, fingers crossed, hopefully you should be okay. You never know until you actually uh, go uh, off by pass and uh, wake the patient, what's the effect? But that's the way to deal with it. IVC tear. How will you find out that there is an IVC tear? Unexplained reduction in the venous return. We explained that the redu reduced perfusion. You're looking at the heart pump and the uh, body. So you have reduced venous return. You feel this, for instance, flooding with venous blood. Um, and uh, on examination, you find a venous, uh, the cannula out, or there is an airlock, or you find a tear. Um, um, first step again off bypass push the venous cannula to reach beyond the tear cool down the circulation to achieve circulatory arrest and then repair under circ arrest iatrogenic aortic dissection how will you find that you are looking at the other side of the uh, assessment process so you're looking at the perfusion side you're having reduced perfusion we explained that reduced oxygen saturation arterial line pressure is high reduced mean arterial pressures um, also because it's a circuit you will also manifest yourself with reduced venous return there is no blood coming out so no blood is coming back uh, examination will reveal a tense hematoma which is far from the cannulation site if you're unlucky the dissection might be manifested as a boogie swelling behind the heart but most of the time it's visible you can see it actually um, first step as usual switch off the pump Connect the arterial line to the venous cannula here, not to achieve uh, retrograde cerebral perfusion, but to achieve uh, to be able to transfuse in the interim while you are creating an, uh, a peripheral cannulation. Central cannulation is not an option in here. You will have to create a peripheral cannulation to cool down, go again on bypass, go on circa rest and repair it. Now, uh, um, um, it's highly variable. Where is the dissection? How far is it? Um, um, but this is a standard um, way, an academic way in looking at it. This is the steps which you need to achieve in order to deal with an iatrogenic aortic dissection. Protamin reaction, the answer for that is understanding what is the reaction happening. There is a Horo classification, that's what we call it. So type 1 reaction is a histamine mediated due to rapid uh, administration of protamin. Of course, it doesn't always happen, but if, it, if that's the case, it's usually the, the least sincere one. So what you can do is uh, achieve, uh, um, um, transfuse some uh, volume as well as calcium might help uh, decreasing. Um, it manifests itself as well dilatation and decreased blood pressure volume and calcium usually help with this process and this is the least uh, sincere one of the all three reactions next is type 2 reaction which is immunoglobulin mediated this happens due to previous exposure um, um, for instance patients with shellfish uh, allergy what is the reason historically speaking the protamin was made from the semen of salmon fish uh, hence, shellfish allergy sometimes predisposes to type 2 reaction. Uh, more commonly, patients on humulin uh, insulin because humulin contains protamin. Uh, humulin insulin contains protamin, so that uh, creates what previous exposure to uh, protamin. It's a type 2 reaction, immunoglobulin mediated. Again, manifests itself as vasodilatation, reduced blood pressure. In this time, the treatment is m a bit more complex, so you need adrenaline, corticosteroids, uh, antihistamines, and oxygen. Uh, depending on the rate of or the severity of the reaction, it may be immediate, anaphylact true anaphylactic, or delayed. It depends how quickly it happens and the severity of the reaction. Now, type 3 reaction is a completely different um, process. So this is a thrombexane A2 activation mediated by the complement system. It happens in genetically predisposed individuals. It causes vast uh, vasoconstriction in the pulmonary tree, which creates uh, acute, severe right-sided heart failure. Um, um, treatment is vasodilatation of the pulmonary tree using mineralone and GTN and this is the most sincere of the uh, uh, three reactions you will need heparin to give him back and it, it usually um, takes a bit of time to recover the RV function uh, then we have finally the pump failure pump could fail 
due to several reasons. One is clotting in the oxygenator in, um, in predisposed individuals. Uh, also, the power supply failure, lower roller head breakdown, oxygen supply failure. Uh, I would like here to emphasize two of the causes of pump failure, for instance, are cryoglobinemia, that is uh, called agglutination uh, uh, syndrome patients who under cold, when the circulation temperature goes down, they start precipitating certain antibodies into complex uh, systems, uh, complex um, um, patterns, and these precipitate and block the oxygenator and block the circulation. Those individuals are genetically predisposed, um, and uh, the solution to this is um, avoid uh, hypothermia. So you need to go to do perform uh, uh, warm heart surgery, warm uh, blood cardioplegia. Um, also, if you can avoid blood, it will be useful because you don't want to give blood which will um, uh, which is susceptible to precipitation into the coronaries. So crystalloid cardioplegia is is uh, more advisable. Plasma phoresis is not an option in here simply because the uh, uh, the particles which form or the uh, antibodies which precipitate um, will not get filtered out. Uh, so plasma phoresis is not effective in here. You actually need to change your strategy of going on bypass. You need warm. Uh, use uh, uh, use crystalloids rather than blood. If you can perform off bypass altogether, that would be even better. Second is a sickle cell crisis. In here, you need to avoid hypothermia. You also need to avoid acidosis. You need to avoid uh, decreased oxygen saturation. Again, it's a very complex um, situation. Um, uh, this is pump failure. Um, what to do? Your aim is to replace the pump. First step again off bypass, clamp all tubes, replace the oxygenator and reconnect all. But bear in mind what stage are you in? Can you massage? Can you restart the heart? Can you restart the lungs? It, it varies what you would you be doing on table uh, depending on what stage did this happen. Finally, this is an MCQ to test your knowledge. I hope you benefit from this chapter, cardiopulmonary bypass, and wish to meet you again in the next chapter of Southampton Reviews and Cardiac Surgery. Thank you very much. Thank you.